returning this week, but and we have children's choir will return as well as they are preparing for baby Sunday. Adult choir will not meet this week. So if you have a standing order for Wednesday night dinner, but will miss this week, let the office know. So we make sure we have just the right amount of food. Next Saturday is our DCC and food distribution. We meet in the parking lot at 8.30 for distribution to begin at 9. Next Sunday is Pastor's Coffee at 9.45, um, and it goes till 10.30. Some people drop in, some people stay to talk. This is a time where if you have questions about St. John or the United Methodist Church or anything you want to ask me, I make sure I'm available in the fellowship hall. This summer, our focus is on is kids and youth is staycation. So starting if we're in May, we have different themes for every month. So that information will be coming out soon. We have some fun ideas for our summer programming. Also, the Green Jackets will be on June 6th. This is our night to go and let Beth know if you would like to purchase a ticket. The United Methodist Church's General Conference begins on April 23rd in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our own Reverend Dana Everhart is a delegate. We'll hold the United Methodist Church in your prayers in the coming weeks, as that will be a 10-day meeting of global. It's a global meeting of United Methodists from all over the world. Uh, when that meeting concludes, I'll have a meeting with all of you for whoever has questions about the General Conference and whatever trouble they get into this time. <laughs> we'll talk about it together. Also, Monday night is our United Women of Faith. They meet in 107. They are doing a study on the book of Luke. And if you are women and you're looking for extra Bible study, this is a great group to be a part of. So they do meet at 7, and that is always open. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God in this, this hour.
Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you raised Christ from the dead and glorified him at your right hand. Let the words of scripture fulfilled in Jesus, your son, burn within our hearts and open our minds to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And now let's turn to our neighbors and greet them and wish them peace. reading from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that, is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number four on page 741. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. How long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. Offer 
right sacrifices. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Hello? Hello? How about this one? <laughs> I think for the people at home, we might need a microphone. That's the problem. Those people that stay at home, they can't hear me the way y'all can hear me. I'm going to test your memory this morning. When I say Christ is risen, you say... Do you remember it? Christ is risen indeed. Let's try that one more time. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Okay, and that is our Easter greeting, right? And you already forgot it. You're supposed to be walking around all the time saying as you're greeting to people that you meet, Christ is risen, and they're supposed to say back, Christ is risen indeed. That's our Easter greeting. For these Sundays, every minister who has stood in the pulpit, I've been listening, and every one of them have said this phrase, every day is Easter. And you know what I started thinking? If every day is Easter, how come I don't have candy every day? <laughs> and bunnies? and eggs and Easter egg hunts and all that kind of stuff. The church does celebrate Easter every time we gather because we celebrate hope. And in the Sundays of Easter, every time the risen Christ comes among his disciples, he has another greeting. He doesn't say, Christ is risen, for them to say Christ is risen indeed. Do you know what he says? No, he doesn't say every day is Easter, but that's good. He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you, okay? So the church throughout the centuries has a ritual, and I'm supposed to teach you boys and girls of the church about church, okay? And we have a ritual, and the ritual is called the passing of peace, okay? So it moves, take your hand, touch my hand, okay, now touch Emily's hand. All right, Emily, you t take it on down. Take it on down. We're passing something along, right? Like if I throw you an individual ball, then we're handing that to one another. So when the church gathers, the church has always said, peace be with you. And how do you respond? Do you know? And also with you. Okay, so I say, peace be with you, and you say, and also with you. Let's try that, congregation, because it's not just a matter of shaking hands and smiling at one another. This is a ritual in which we hand the energy of peace 
among each other. So peace be with you. And also with you. All right. And the final thing I want to say before we have our prayer time is our scripture just told us that you are God's children. And I can hear that all the time because I needed to be reminded that I am God's child. And that means God loves me just the way your moms and dads and grandparents and people in your life love you. Repeat after me our prayer. God, we thank you for this day, for everything that you have made. And as we gather as your people, we know that it is Easter, and you are among us in peace. Amen. As you are able, please stand for a reading from the Gospel, found in Luke chapter 24. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. When I was in high school, we welcomed a new student. And when you're in a small town, someone new is a big deal. And it's not easy walking in to a high school where everyone was together from birth. So when we got someone new, I think they would really have to work on figuring out what their friend group was going to be. And, you know, not every time was your friend group ready to bring in someone new. But I had a friend uh, who made his way into our group, and he kind of made his way into our youth group, even though he was Catholic. So he was at the Catholic Church on Sundays, but he would be with the youth group when we were doing it, any other activities during the week. And he would go on trips with us. And he was also really smart. And you know in high school there's that dynamic of who is the smartest. And here he was, this outsider, who was the smartest. And he kind of had to weave in to dealing with that dynamic of the competition of who is doing the best. And he did really well at that. And so he was able to kind of make his way into my group of friends. And then we all went our different ways into college. And towards the end of his time in college, 
he died. And it was a mysterious death. And it was one of those things, I was in my very early 20s, and the sting of his death was unlike anything I had ever experienced in grief. By this point, my grandfather, who I was very close to, had also died, and it was maybe six months later that my friend died. And there was a lot of unanswered questions. And so I observed and kind of walked through this weird and sad time, and I watched my friends as everyone kind of sought after their own path of trying to piece together exactly what happened. And everyone had their way of checking in to kind of make sure it was all real. Because it just couldn't be real. So we would go and like, somebody would like check into his email. People would check his little website that he ran for his class. And so we had a walk about a week where everybody came home and back to town and get to the point where we had his funeral and then everybody then disappears. And they're still, for me, and I, would, I think for my friends, we still don't have a lot of closure on that. Well, during the time being, I was a student at Emory, so I had to email from my professors and tell them I was going to miss class, which was a big deal, because you don't miss class. They expect you to be there at Emory University versus LaGrange College. They would have just put their arms around you and been like, you're great. But Emory had these expectations of me. And so I had to tell them, and I get back to the swing of school, and I'm in this small group, and the professor leans into like a group of 12 of us, and he says, Jenny, can you tell us why you missed class? Knowing he knew, because I did like tell the professors what had occurred. And I had to sit there in front of complete strangers and tell them why I had missed class. And I burst into tears. It was so embarrassing, oh my goodness. In that moment, I could have just crawled on my hands and knees out of the door and found my way to the car. It was too much. But something occurred. After I had disclosed everything that had occurred in the last week of my life, all the details, they all began to share with me their experience of something very similar. And in that group, we ranged from our early 20s and to people who had retired and come back for another degree. And everyone had walked this pain before. It was kind of like I was the last one to get the memo on what this pain felt like. So they all began to kind of put me back together and let me be comfortable within the embarrassment of just bursting into tears. And we spent about two hours together that day. And I walked out and walked to my car and there was something about peace that had occurred. Now, I think it could only happen because some reason I was able to share with people who were complete strangers pain. And they were able to respond with love. The disciples have already witnessed the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus, but it's just two of them. And they have a lot of doubt and disbelief. And they don't recognize Jesus until he breaks bread before them. But they see and they know that this is the risen Christ. Now they are all back together in one place, and there's 11 disciples. When Jesus appears to them, and they know. And they know because of the scars on his body. They know, and they go from disbelief to great joy. They know that peace is present. 
when I worked with a senior pastor for years, we would debate on how we would like to meet Jesus. What would we like Jesus to look like? And it was because we would always be preaching these after Easter passages. And he and I both had very distinct views of the resurrected Lord. He wanted Jesus in this form as he was in Luke and in the form as he is with Thomas where you see everything. And I want to see Jesus in the form where Jesus is all put back together. Where you don't see the scars. And you know, that's a, a great, deep, theological debate of the resurrected Christ. But most importantly, it's that, that peace that the resurrected Christ brings to the disciples is the same peace that the Holy Spirit brings to us. Even when we have debates on what Jesus will look like in the kingdom to come. The most important thing is in that there is eternal peace. We get moments of peace in this life. Moments of peace that come through joy that are a response to disbelief and doubt and fear. But most importantly, as disciples, we are in the job of sharing peace with our neighbors. Sharing peace. Because when we can share peace, when we can share love, when we can share hope, then the sting of life, the worries of life, the fears of life, don't have to just consume every second of life. So we receive peace and we give peace. And we do it over and over and over again. And we do it without fear. And I think that day in that small group, no one was afraid to tell me what they had walked through. They just shared it. They were open to it. Something about the Holy Spirit moved them in that way. Too often, we let the fear a vulnerability, the fear of giving and receiving peace, hold us back. I mean, that's probably a lot of the world's whole problems when you watch the news. We are all afraid of what peace will look like because it is something that we don't experience enough to feel comfortable in it. For we are way more comfortable as a people in conflict. But peace, peace is something that maybe we don't quite know how to deal with. And there's a vulnerability to that that maybe we don't trust. The disciples were dealing with just that. Who did they trust following the crucifixion? Who did they trust following the resurrection? It's the risen Christ that they trust, who appears again and again to put them back together, to get them on to the work of the church that they will form, of baptizing and telling new people of the resurrection. And they have to do that with a sense of peace, because it won't quite work without it. So in the week ahead, when peace feels far away, when someone offers you peace, accept it. And share the peace of Christ with your neighbors. Let people in your life know that they too are a beloved child of God. That there is a place for them in God's kingdom and in God's work. Just as Jesus appeared and brought peace to the disciples, 
Let the Holy Spirit work in you so that peace may be with you in the week ahead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as you're able, please rise as we affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed on page, in the bulletin, or on page 881. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have a few moments of, of quiet prayer, and then I will lead us in prayer together. Loving God, we are grateful for this beautiful spring day. In this season of Easter within our church, we celebrate how you came into our world through Christ, how you rose from the dead, how you appeared to the disciples, and how your Holy Spirit guides us as your people, Lord. Lord, the work of the church is the work of peace, and peace is not easy. Guide our actions and our th thoughts and our words and our deeds to reflect your peace, Lord. Let us look towards your love when things are tough. Let us be people of great grace in seasons where there is difficulty within our city, our families, and in our world. Lord, we pray for peace between Israel and Iran. We pray that there are people who will show a way forward, that way towards peace. Lord, you have given us a responsibility of disciples of sharing your good news, even in times when good news may feel far away. Give us the words and actions we need in your love. Lord, we pray for our city today as it welcomes the world after a long week. Lord, guide people as they head home and as students return back to school. Let this season of Easter be a renewal within our spirits 
As God's children, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward as we share in our offering. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom.
Well, I hope you enjoy watching some golf this afternoon, and we enjoy traffic returning to normal. <laughs> Our closing hymn today is Christ is Alive, found on page 318. You're invited to stand and sing as we close worship. Peace and love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.